Hi everyone, thanks for joining us at Microsoft Research Summit 2021. My name is Nolan Wagner, and I will be presenting our work on safe reinforcement learning using advantage-based intervention, which was published at ICML this year. This work was done in collaboration with Byron Boots from UW and Chingon Chang from MSR. So in order for reinforcement learning to be applied to real world problems like robotics, we must make sure the RL agent is safe both during and after training. Typical safe RL approaches, however, make a trade-off. They either don't ensure safety during training or require an external safety mechanism to be present at all times, even after training. Our work, on the other hand, seeks to satisfy three requisites. The agent must be safe during training and learn to be safe for deployment, and the agent must achieve high rewards at deployment. I'll go over the safe RL problem setup now for this work. We assume the state space is partitioned into two sets, a safe set and an absorbing unsafe set. We also assume knowledge of these uh, safe and unsafe sets. A state at some time step t is denoted with st and an action with at. The transition is also assumed to be stochastic. The task reward r is assumed to be non-negative, and we additionally define a safety cost, which is an indicator of whether we're in the unsafe set. We also include a discount factor gamma. For this work, we will consider two value functions for this problem. The first value function corresponds to the usual reward function, which is what we're all familiar with. And the second corresponds to the safety cost function. Note that this second value function has a bar over the V. The safe RL objective is to maximize the return from the initial state while having the associated cost be below some threshold. One interpretation of this objective is that the safety constraint only applies to the optimized policy. However, for our setting, we also desire for this constraint to hold throughout training. Prior methods for safe RL, as I mentioned, fall into one of two camps. In constrained reinforcement learning, we solve a constrained optimization problem where we also optimize a penalty to ensure safety. With this approach, we directly solve for the problem of interest and can therefore get good performance and safety at deployment. However, the agent will not be safe during training, and in practice, this optimization can be unstable owing to the associated minimax optimization problem. In the other camp, we have shielding approaches that wrap the RL policy with a given safety layer. Any unsafe action proposed by the policy is then filtered out, and we then solve a new unconstrained RL problem. By design, this approach is safe during training and allows us to solve a simpler unconstrained problem. However, since we've changed the problem, there is now a mismatch between the original MDP and the new one induced by the safety layer, so there may be no guarantees on safety or, or performance of the policy once the safety layer is removed. As we'll see though, our proposed approach, Sailor, will combine the best of both paradigms, with safety at training and deployment, and large returns at deployment, as long as the optimal policy satisfies some assumptions. With that, let's now get into the algorithm. I'll first sketch out the intervention mechanism. We assume access to a baseline policy mu that can keep the agent safe starting from the initial state. Given this baseline policy and an advantage threshold eta, we can then define an intervention rule g. Given an RL policy pi, we then wrap this policy with g to form a shielded policy for exploration. Let's now see how to sample actions from this shielded policy. Given the state s, we query actions from both the RL policy pi and baseline policy mu. We then compare the long-term cost of performing pi's action to that of mu's, hence the advantage function. If the relative cost meets the threshold, we return pi's action, otherwise we return mu's. Now for the algorithm. The shielded policy is what we will run in the real MDP, while the RL policy observes that it is running in a surrogate MDP constructed by the intervention rule. The only difference in the dynamics between the two is that if pi is intervened, it will transition to an absorbing intervened state. So what happens is that at any given time, g will observe the proposed action from pi in blue and compare its cost to that of the baseline policy in gold, which is what we went over in the previous slide. In this case, the corresponding advantage meets the threshold, so we accept that action from pi. Similarly, for the next time step, 
The proposed action is deemed safe, so we accept that action from pi. However, at this time step, the advantage is deemed too large, so the baseline policy will override pi and complete the episode in the real MDP. From the perspective of the RL policy pi, it transitioned to an absorbing state and received a reward of negative one. Sailor will simply optimize the RL policy pi in the surrogate MDP using something like PPO. Now I want to point out that the use of the advantage function instead of the Q function for intervention is quite deliberate. In particular, with the advantage function, the intervention mechanism is less conservative since the value function is non-negative, but more importantly, we end up getting a reduction from constrained RL to unconstrained RL, which allows us to use off-the-shelf algor RL algorithms like PPO. And as alluded to earlier, our approach comes with appealing theoretical guarantees. During training, our shielded policy will be roughly as safe as the baseline policy, with the extra gap related to the size of the intervention threshold. Similarly, at deployment, the optimized policy will have the same safety bound, but this time without the intervention mechanism being present. Intuitively, this is because the policy will learn to never be intervened and therefore will be as safe as the baseline policy mu. Finally, the optimized policy will achieve nearly the same returns as the true optimal policy with the gap determined by how likely that optimal policy would have been intervened. Thus, our algorithm has appealing guarantees on all three requisites of our problem. Finally, we give experimental results on two tasks. The first task is a point robot that we want to move quickly in a counterclockwise direction, but not touch the vertical red lines. The baseline policy tries to slow the robot to a stop. The second task is a half cheetah that we want to run fast while having the link circled in green stay in a given height range. The baseline policy is a model predictive controller that tries to keep the link within that height range. We show how Sailor performs against the constrained RL algorithm CPO. And what we see is that the results for both tasks validate the theory. Namely, we violate constraints far less frequently during training compared to that of CPO. In fact, in some cases, we do not violate constraints whatsoever. But we do not sacrifice any safety or performance at deployment. We see that at deployment, we essentially have the same safety and returns as that of CPO for these two domains. With that, thank you all again for attending this talk. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to this email, and I'd be happy to talk with you.